Thank you, everyone, for coming today. It's a, it's a pleasure to speak to you all. Um, can everyone hear me okay? All right. So my talk is on medialization, laryngoplasty to inject or to implant. Okay, I have no financial disclosures, by the way. Um, so getting into the vocal fold paralysis assessment, voice evaluation is key, um, not only by the laryngologist slash otolaryngologist, but also by the speech language pathologist. Um, speech therapy plays a vital role in our practice as well. Both of us assess the patient's vocal requirements. Um, in addition, one of the key things to remember is do not perform any type of irreversible intervention in patients um, with the possibility of a functional return for six to 12 months. So you wouldn't want to do a permanent procedure such as a thyroplasty with somebody that has a fresh onset of vocal fold paralysis because there's a chance that the nerve may come back. Typically, we give up to 12 months. Um, and also, surgery is not necessary in some patients. So when we're evaluating for vocal fold paralysis, some of the things that I do in the office is a manual compression test. Basically, you put, the, you put your hands on the thyroid cartilage, and you lateralize, and you let the patient listen to their voice pre-compression and post-compression. Um, usually you can tell a difference, except if, the, if it's an older patient and their thyroid cartilage is very calcified, or if somebody has a very firm neck. Um, but that's a nice way to tell if medialization is going to help a patient. Um, on laryngoscopy and stroboscopy, we assess the extent of the posterior glottic gap, which is very important, because if you just correct anteriorly and not address the posterior aspect, the patient might be not happy with the results. So. You want to sit down and talk to the patient, consider consenting patients for both anterior and posterior medialization procedures. Um, the picture on the bottom is basically showing a vocal fold paralysis, and you can see with adduction, there is a significant posterior gap. So as far as the prognosis for vocal fold paralysis, um, as we know, it can recover. It can be a complete or a partial paralysis. That's the $1,000 question when a patient comes in, well, is this going to come back? So this is where the laryngeal electromyography comes into play. Um, this measures the electrical activity of laryngeal muscles, and it tells us if there's a paralysis or a cricoretinoid dislocation, for example. Um, it also gives us information regarding prognosis for spontaneous recovery, and it shortens time to permanent treatment. As far as treatment, voice therapy, swallowing therapy are conservative measures that are very important. Um, and then surgical options. Temporary options would be a vocal